this is my latest project building a generator shed uh, originally I was gonna put it next to the house but I think you have to be a couple of feet away from it so I decided to move pretty much 20 feet away <laughs> um, but the generator shed was built using old decking so we had our deck rebuilt and this is the wood left over or from the old decking and I'll show you what I did so this is entirely out of recycled wood um, this is our generator yes I'm gonna put the gas in there but obviously when it's running I will not um, but that's just for storage so what I did is a three-sided shed meaning let's see if I can do this you lift this up and there's a nifty bar here Ugh. It's hard to do this with one hand. Uh, there. So, um, and the reason why the top has to come up is because you have to change. Um, you have to fill it with gas. And having it that low, you can't. So this allows me to take the gas, and this is where it goes. Um, all right, um, so that's why it opens up the way it does. Um, the only nifty thing about this is because it's old decking, this is actually really heavy. And uh, I'm not that strong, <laughs> so <laughs> I need help. Uh, and what I did back here is I put springs. I pulled the springs in the back, left a little ledge here. Um, and so it helps me uh, when I lift it. Um, the springs, these two springs will pull and make uh, lifting a little easier. So I thought about ways to solve that problem, including putting weights back there, but I think the springs work out okay. Um, it's still a little heavy, but it definitely helps. Uh, one thing to note is I didn't really build this shed for soundproofing. I really built it to keep it from the weather, mostly rain, uh, just to keep it dry. But a lot of people have insulated this or have put fans in here when they made it tight and soundproof. This is not for sound. As you can see, it's pretty porous and you can see right through um, some areas of the shed. And, and I've actually put mesh, like metal um, openings because air has to flow from here and then spits it out at the, uh, the exhaust which is right here there so that's what that mesh is here for um, just a metal mesh um, to get the air flow and, and it's on both sides right so it's intake and outtake but it is not meant to reduce although I suspect I'll run it um, at the end here to see if it cuts down on the noise. It should a little bit, but it's not, this shed is not meant to cut down on the noise. It's, again, it's really um, waterproofing because if your generator gets wet, it will rust, as you've seen here. And we've only had this for, it only ran once uh, for three days in the rain, and it's the bolts, uh, as you can see, is starting to rust. Um, three days so I do want to keep it dry um, so this shed is gonna house this Reliance inlet box I'm thinking about putting it right here so this is where I'll run the line into the house uh, across the yard so I'm going to be burying a 8 gauge they said I can use an 8 gauge, so I will. Um, I'm just going to bury it all the way in the ground. That goes, wraps around the front of the house. And that's where all the conduit from the utility company from, and it'll go into right there. Uh, so I will sneak that line in there somehow. But yeah, so it has to travel about 75 feet. And 
you know, hopefully if I've tucked this thing away so it's not a monstrosity within the yard, even though I can't really miss it, it turned out a lot bigger than I thought. But, you know, we get a lot of power outages here, so hopefully this will help. Here's a quick note on this generator and what I learned. So I thought it'd be cool to go from, uh, initially I was going to buy the 7,500 watts, uh, but I upgraded to 9,500, which has a tw uh, peak of 12,000 watts. Um, but what that did, unbeknownst to me, is that in addition to the 7500 only has a 30 amp output, which is common to a lot of generators. In fact, I think the majority of the generators for RVs and uh, portable ones are 30 amp. But this bumps it up to a 50 amp, right? And a 50 amp outlet is very different than a 30 amp outlet. Um, and what I didn't know is that every thing that involves 50 amps is about 50% more expensive and you'll have to get an inlet box that's 50 amp you have to run wires which I will do here uh, either I mean I think technically you're supposed to use a 6 gauge but um, Reliance said that I could use an 8 gauge so going from a 30 amp which is very common uh, you can buy a lot of wires uh, and plugs and adapters and extension cords but a 50 amp not so much uh, just to give you an idea to run an extension cord from here to my inlet box I mean I only need about five feet four feet maybe but ten feet is the minimum I could buy and I haven't done it yet because the the cheapest one I could find was about a hundred dollars just to have that extension cord go five feet. Yikes. In case I failed to mention it, when you built a shed, the generator has to be level. That's why I have it at this angle. Um, well, they say that the generator can't run uh, on, in an angle, so level's the way to go.